Thank you for joining us on Synthesis Workshop. On today's Research Spotlight episode, we're joined by Dr. Ben Bergstrom. Ben earned his bachelor's degree in chemistry at the University of Minnesota Twin Cities, where he did undergraduate research with Professor Waylon Noland. He then continued his professional development by doing an internship at Upshur Smith Pharmaceuticals in Minneapolis. Afterwards, he completed his PhD in a group of Professor Jared Shaw at UC Davis, and he'll be starting this summer at AbbVie in the Centralized Organic Synthesis Group as a discovery process chemist. And from there, I'll hand it over to you, Ben. Thank you for joining us today. Hi, everyone. Thank you, Matthew, for that introduction, and thank you for inviting me to share my work on the divergent asymmetric synthesis of panelmycin A and B, TM135, and varomycin F. Panelmycins A and B are a novel group of isochromane-based polyketide natural products first reported in 2012 by Omura and coworkers. They isolated these compounds from a species of Streptomyces bacteria alongside NFAT133 and other known metabolites. In this work, they tested the panelmycins and NFAT133 for antitrypanosomal activity. Although the activity in the assay was comparable to current medications, cytotoxicity was observed giving a poor selectivity index. Importantly, the relative configuration of dependent secondary alcohol was not determined. Given our previous reports synthesizing isochromans using rhodium catalyzed CH insertion reactions, we thought these structures would make an attractive target for a total synthesis. In 2020, we reported a method for the stereoselective construction of substituted isochromans by CH insertion using donor donor carbenes. This reaction proceeds by oxidizing aryl aryl hydrazones to the corresponding diazo species under mild and chemoselective conditions with manganese dioxide. In a one pot protocol, a rhodium carboxylate catalyst is subsequently added, which rapidly decomposes the diazo to afford a rhodium carbene. CH insertion occurs next, generating isochromans in good yields, with perfect diastereoselectivity for the cis isomer in all cases, and with high enantioselectivity. Additionally, we do not observe any instances of the competing Stevens rearrangement. As such, we imagined a retrosynthetic approach for the panoamycins where an acetophenone derived hydrazone undergoes 1 6 CH insertion to furnish the requisite isochroman while setting the two cis stereocenters on the heterocycle. One challenge with this approach is that, in our previous work, the only example of a methyl aryl carbene gave poor enantioselectivity, observing 60-40 ER. It was obvious that the panolomycins could be interconverted simply by changing the oxidation state of the pendant secondary alcohol. From there, two overall strategies were initially conceived. The first of these involved the hydroboration oxidation reaction of a tri-substituted alkene to achieve the two stereocenters of the leftmost stereotetrad, featured in panoamycin B. Because the configuration of the secondary alcohol at carbon-13 was unknown at the time, we considered that either epimer at that position could be accessed by the choice of alkene isomer. The benzylic sidechain could then be synthesized by a nucleophilic addition to a carbonyl of the isochromanone, and as previously discussed, the isochromone would be constructed by a rhodium-catalyzed CH insertion reaction. This synthesis would be derived from a commercially available benzoic acid. This route was initially most attractive to us due to our previous work, where CH insertion reactions involving allylic insertion centers were high-yielding and highly enantioselective. The second approach would involve a Vakar oxidation of a terminal olefin to generate the pendant methyl ketone of panolomycin A. Panolomycin A could then be stereoselectively reduced to access either C13 epimer to afford panolomycin B. As in the first strategy, the benzylic sidechain would be accessed by nucleophilic addition to the isochromanone carbonyl, and a CH insertion reaction would furnish the isochromane. This strategy was initially less attractive to us considering that the insertion site is less activated than the allylic CH bond of the other strategy, and it features adjacent alkyl branching introducing steric bulk at the insertion site. An advantage to this strategy is that it allowed for the predetermination of the C12 stereocenter, which would be found to be important later. All things considered, the hydroboration oxidation based strategy was attempted first. The requisite acetophenone derived hydrazone was synthesized in a straightforward manner. Alkylations with tiglil and angelo alcohols were followed up with lithium halogen exchange and attack of a winder of acetamide. Hydrazine was then condensed onto these acetophenones to afford hydrazones in high yields. Initial screening of chiral catalysts and solvents showed that these substrates proceeded to form isochromans with an antioselectivity far exceeding that of the previous 60-40 result for a methyl aryl carbene. We were able to achieve 93-7 ER for both angelo and tiglil derived substrates. This was accomplished by reducing the reaction temperature and a subtle change in catalyst selection. Having confirmed our suspicion that the allylic insertion sites would facilitate enantioselectivity, and with the successful formation of the isochromane core, 
we proceeded on with the hydroboration oxidation route towards the total synthesis of the proposed structures of panolamycin A and B. The benzylic methylene of the isochromane was oxidized with PCC to afford the isochromanone. The lactone carbonyl was then attacked by the lithium enolate of tert butyl acetate, generating the corresponding cyclic hemiacetal and high yield and diastereo selectivity. Using BF3 etherate and triisopropyl silane, this intermediate was stereoselectively reduced to afford an isochromane featuring the desired all cis configuration about the heterocycle. Several hydroboration oxidation conditions were attempted, but the only procedure that gave any consumption of starting material was with borane dimethyl sulfide complex, affording the secondary alcohol as a single diastereomer in 95% yield. Reduction of the ester sidechain afforded a structure that could correspond with panolamycin B. Subjection of this diol to a protection oxidation deprotection sequence could afford a structure corresponding to panolamycin A. However, when compared to the natural substance, neither of these structures were a direct match by NMR. After isolating the panolamycin B isomer with paranitrobenzoyl chloride, a crystal structure was obtained confirming that the hydroboration oxidation reaction had produced an undesired diastereomer. This synthesis was also performed using the other isomer of alkene, and again, both panolamycin A and B isomers were an NMR mismatch for the natural substance. Therefore, we determined that the hydroboration oxidation was not a suitable strategy for the synthesis of the natural products and that the Vakra oxidation route would be pursued. The Vakra oxidation based strategy was then developed, starting with an etherification under acidic conditions via the trichloroacid imidate, reduction of the ester followed by the Swern oxidation, and a Wittig reaction furnished the desired benzyl ether. Again, the acetophenone was produced by lithium halogen exchange and attack of a wine rib amide. Condensation with hydrazine afforded the requisite hydrozone, and the substrate was subjected to the reaction conditions optimized for the previous allylic substrates. Much to our surprise, the one-pot protocol did not generate any amount of the isochromane. Rather, the reduced reactivity of the alkyl insertion site allowed for the formation of an azine byproduct. This is the result of slow insertion, where an intermolecular reaction of the rhodium carbene and a diazo species occurs instead of the intramolecular CH insertion reaction. Although this discovery was disappointing, we devised a modified protocol that would limit the concentrations of diazo and carbene present in situ. This inverse addition method involves the oxidation of a hydrozone to the diazo, filtering off the oxidant in a two-pot protocol, then adding the concentrated diazo solution dropwise over several hours to a dilute solution of the rhodium catalyst, as pictured here. With this procedure, we were delighted to see a minimization of the azine byproduct, and we were able to lower the catalyst loading to 0.5 mol percent. Because we have the C12 stereo center predetermined, the stereo induction of the chiral catalyst is observed as a ratio of diastereomers. Because of the high selectivity for the cis isomer we usually see for the isochromane substrates, the observed 80-20 diastereomer ratio is between the isochromanes labeled A and B. While these isomers were not readily separable by column chromatography, after PCC oxidation, the respective isochromanones were cleanly isolated. Taking the major isomer into the nucleophilic addition and reduction sequence previously described in the hydroboration oxidation route, we were finally able to access the fully substituted all cis isochromane ester intermediate. After a facile reduction, the Vakar oxidation was performed, which generated the proposed structure of panolamycin A. Much to our disappointment, this compound was again an NMR mismatch for the natural material. This led us to the conclusion that the structure had been misassigned. However, Reduction of the methyl ketone with lithium aluminum hydride produced a 75-25 mixture of C13 diastereomers, where the major isomer was an NMR match for the natural sample of panolamycin B. At this point, we were certainly still interested in the synthesis of panolamycin A. In order to determine the identity of the natural substance, we reached out to our computational collaborators in the Tantillo lab to see if they would be able to computationally predict the correct structure based on a comparison between calculated and reported NMR spectra. Dr. Amy Merrill performed these calculations, showing that the structure proposed by Omer and co-workers was indeed a pretty good match, but another isomer had a much better mean average deviation with the natural substance. This isomer, shown at the top right, was suggested to be the correct structure of panolamycin A. As such, the isochromanone intermediate generated in the first iteration of the Vakar route was used in a divergent sequence to produce the desired stereochemistry at the benzylic position. In a sequence inspired by Scott Ricknowski's work, this was accomplished by reducing the lactone with dibol and isolating the resultant hydroxyl in situ. This acetal was then subjected to BF3 etherate and a siloketine acetal nucleophile, allowing for the diastereoselective addition of the nucleophile to the oxocarbenium ion from the least hindered side. This produced the desired isomer at that key benzylic position. 
In the same manner as before, the ester was reduced, and the terminal olefin was oxidized to the methyl ketone. This synthesis was then finally successful in producing a structure that was consistent with the NMR spectra for pinolomycin A, and the structure of the natural product was reassigned. In this way, we completed the total syntheses of pinolomycin A and pinolomycin B in an asymmetric divergent pathway. Contemporaneous with our total synthesis efforts was the report of the re-isolation of pinolomycin A by Mahmoud and co-workers. In this work, they reassigned the structure of pinolomycin A prior to our publication, performing an updated analysis of the NMR spectra, independently also coming to the same conclusion that the configuration at the benzylic position was incorrect in the original elucidation. They also isolated related isomer, TM-135, which incidentally has the same structure as was originally proposed for pinolomycin A by Omura. Based on their analysis, they posit that NFAT-133, also isolated in their work, could cyclize from either the RE or C faces of the styrene moiety to afford TM-135 or pinolomycin A, respectively. Therefore, via the Vakar oxidation route to access pinolomycin B, we had also synthesized TM-135. Serendipitously, a report from earlier this year by Schaeberle and Bauer described the isolation of a related natural product, varomycin F. We identified that this natural product could be accessed rapidly from the isochromonone intermediate via the Vakar oxidation. Much to our surprise, the methyl ketone that we expected to correspond to the proposed structure of varomycin F was not congruent with the NMR spectra for the natural substance. This suggested that the structure was misassigned. Fortunately, we had produced another diastereomer of the isochromonone as a result of the CH insertion reaction. This isomer was subjected to the Vakar oxidation, and we were delighted to discover that this compound matched with the reported NMR spectra for varomycin F. In conclusion, we were able to achieve the divergent, asymmetric total synthesis of pinolomycin A, pinolomycin B, TM-135, and varomycin F, featuring a CH insertion reaction using a donor-donor carbene in the key bond-forming step. Finally, I would like to thank my awesome lab mates and my advisor, Jared Shaw. Thanks for tuning in. Thank you for tuning in for this Research Spotlight episode, and thank you to Ben for coming on to share your work with us. If you enjoyed the episode, you can support us by subscribing and telling your peers about this podcast, and feel free to send us any questions or comments you have. Follow us on Twitter to stay up to date, and see you all next time.